Hey, what's up guys? So today let's talk about the mall, right? Now there's two different versions of the mall and then we also have the welcoming and actually really exciting new programming to the malls. So as of right now, as of this second, if you're buying a brand new mall from let's say B Myers or, um, or TNVC or something like that, um, if they're, they have brand new minted, brand new like just born malls that are coming out, all of them are coming with the new pattern of programming. So what they did was they changed a couple of the settings and made them do different things now, which is kind of cool, really exciting, and let's go over them. So starting out, what you can see here is I have a C1 Plus and a DA mall. These are brand new. Um, I believe they were made in July. So they're almost, uh, let's see, today's August 5th. They are a month old. <laughs> if that right depending on when they were born in July so we have these two month old babies and uh, and let's go through them and talk about it right now let's talk about the new settings and let's also talk about the actual mall from front to back so those of you that don't know can be learned so once again let's start from front to back and actually talk about the different settings and different ways this mall is used so what you see here, both of them are configured in the right-hand configuration, which can be easily switched by pulling the tail cap out, switching with a little screw in the back, and then you can flip it around so that it configures similar to this one. This is my older mall with the older settings. It's an old, old, first one of the first ones, um, obviously with the old tail cap and everything. And we'll get there though. So starting at the front, we have the propeller cap, which gives you a couple different settings where you have the off, right? So the off position, you have a visible position, and then you have the IR position. These are gonna dictate what the slider does in relation to which mode you put it in. So on the off position, nothing does nothing, right? It's off, <laughs> as it says. So don't worry about that. Now, when you go to a viz mode, right? On viz, on low mode, you get a low laser mid mid range which the slider gives you the that ability and we'll get there on talking about the slider gives you a brighter laser so kind of cool so other than that the only other variant is when you go to high mode you get a high laser and then if you hit the b button and that's the a button you get the high laser and with the b button you get a blinking laser right so for signaling or certain things that some guys use the blinky one for I never had to use a strobing mode or a blinking mode on my lasers, um, but you could program them that way. Back in the day, the PEX and the, the LA5s and stuff had a program mode that can then you can go ahead and dictate uh, how it strobes, how fast it strobes, things like that. Now, that's the viz modes. So on each of those, it's just a visible laser. The only one is when it's on long range mode, on B is where it blinks. So nothing too crazy. So when you switch to IR mode, what you see is the IR actual propeller cap, that portion of it is very tactile, right? It's, it's 180 degrees from your off position, as you can see. And then it also has these tiny little ears that kind of look like RMR ears, or they could be also like just two teeth, or you could look at them like mini IR Batman, like whatever it is, or however you wanna describe it, that's what you're getting in IR mode. Now, let's talk about each setting and each each wavelength, or not wavelength, but the actual degree of what you're getting out of each of these buttons when you're on each of these slider modes. So when the slider here, right, as you guys can see, this little slider, when it's to the rear position towards the shooter, um, that is considered a short range mode or what uh, some of us refer to it as CQB mode, things like that. Now that CQB mode or a short range mode is gonna actuate a couple different things right it's going to give you with the a button it's going to give you what would be a pointer with an a button so no illuminator which is kind of cool and and kind of different where the older malls this gave you an illuminator that was around 60 degrees right where now we're getting a just pointer which is kind of cool in my opinion that's that's actually a really good call by b myers because we can use that, right? When when your lighting environment dictates that you don't need an illuminator, it's just wasted, you know, illumination to bounce off things, do certain things, reflect off stuff. 
but now with just a laser you can work a lot of problems. Then when you switch over, now the new B button is gonna give you that 60 degree illuminator. So your pointer is the same, right? So 0.25 milliwatts, nothing too crazy on the CQB mode, but it's giving you an illuminator that is going out 60 degrees. So it's actually wider than most of us can see with our night vision, depending on what you're using. So if you're using panos or something like that, it may be not wide enough, but for most of us with duels that aren't articulating or panoed in any way, then that's gonna be more than we can actually visually see through tubes, which gives us really good illumination in an interior environment, one of my favorite modes. Now, going further up, right, one slider up, which meets right before we have to push the detent, that is your mid-range. Now, mid-range mode is, is pretty dang easy and has its own cool settings and changed once again. So the A button is a good old laser, right? About seven, I'm sorry, 0.7 milliwatts. And then it's also using what would be a two degree illuminator. Right, so the A button is giving you two degrees of illumination, which is kind of cool. So it's very tight. It's actually really usable for certain things, especially in a mid-range mode where now you're trying to see from room to room. It's very, very useful. Then the B button is going to be just a good old pointer and 10 degree all right, illumination. So it's a little wider, gives you what you, you and most of us are used to when it comes to normal lasers, where it gives you that donut and a little, and a little laser. And hopefully you guys are seeing this in the, the B roll or to one of these sides here. Now, then as you go through, right? So A button just gives you a two degree and a pointer, and then B button gives you a 10 degree and a pointer. And the pointer is around 0.7 milliwatts. Um, I'm sorry, and the pointer for the B button, I, I apologize, I misspoke. The pointer for the B button is actually only 0.4 milliwatts. So it's actually dimmer, giving you that you're using an illuminator. It's kind of nice so it doesn't bloom or become a, a, a big fireball. Now, what we've all been waiting for is long range mode, right? Or long mode. When you go and push the detent down, you slide the slider all the way forward, you're going into a long range mode. Now you have four different settings. So we'll talk about them and I'll hopefully show you guys them in one of these little boxes up here. And what you have is now on the A button, you have just a pointer, right? So the pointer is gonna give you a, a, a either a, well, the pointer is gonna give you what's considered a good old high laser, which is like 1.5 milliwatts and the actual illuminator that's attached to it is only a two degree illuminator. So similar to the mid-range mode, just laser, it's gonna be a two degree illuminator. So very, very uh, small and very, uh, I would say more, more on the side of being uh, minimalized enough that it could push through certain things, right? Photonic barriers, once again, dark or, or light ones. And then what's kind of cool is they gave you a different mode that you could use the A button where it's called the, uh, the triple click or what, what it really is is one, two, hold on the third push. So it's one, two, hold. And once you hold that, it'll switch over. And what it switches to on the A button is a six milliwatt laser. So a little dimmer of a laser, but it gives you a little bit of a, a, a brighter illuminator. So it switches you up a little bit so that you can change for the lighting environment that you're in, depending on what you're doing. So kind of cool where it's, it's either your, your normal illuminator laser or it brightens it up depending on what you're seeing. And that's with a, a pointer and a two degree uh, illuminator. Then on the B button, this is where kind of kind of I think is really cool. So on the B button, the normal is a pointer and a 10 degree illuminator, which is kind of nice, right? You're getting a little bit more width out of it because some of us use long range mode indoors. Um, so if you're trying to push down a long hallway or push from room to door to room to door, room to door that all look through each other, you can really push through that with that illuminator mode. And then not just that, but if you double click and press, so one, two, click on the third one and hold, uh, if you do that, now you just get a pointer, a really bright pointer, a 1.5 milliwatt pointer, and a two degree illuminator. So very thin illuminator. So almost just looks like a laser, which is absolutely perfect for those of you that are gonna mount this on top of a scope uh, for a clip-on night vision device. 
So right there, it's giving you a little bit more uh, usability. Now, once you switch to one of the two alternate modes that are on here, right, or, or what are considered the triple tap or triple click or whatever mode, once you switch to those, what you're getting is that mode's gonna stay. So once you, you switch and you come back, you come back to it or you let's say you tapped it and you shut it off and you come back onto it, it's gonna stay in that mode. You don't have to go to that mode again. So on long range mode, now you have four different settings. So in totality on these lasers, you have six settings, I'm sorry, eight settings on the new ones and on your old lasers, you were using only six. So kind of cool new programming for me. I, I personally like it. It's something new to learn, which isn't a big deal, right? Learning is a thing. So we just do it. But on both of them, you're now getting that, which is pretty awesome. Now, going further on the head, uh, on both sides right here, all right, it's very dim. And let me see if it'll turn on and, and be visible once I turn it on but you have an actual light that turns on and shows you. So orange is the armed mode. And let me see if I can get that to show. Probably not. Nah, it's, it's not gonna focus. But right here is a little, um, it, it's pretty much the light that gives you some kind of indicator that the unit is on. So if you're sitting there and you don't know if your unit's on, you can either feel for it or you can look and the little orange light will be on. If the unit is powered, it'll be green. So let's say you left it on and now you're like, oh shit, my laser's been on this whole time. You may not know, but you can check it in the dark with that. Uh, you could also just put down your nods and see, or just shut the whole thing off and then you know it's on an off position. But some guys just, sometimes they leave their shit on. So there's an indicator on this side and there's an indicator on this side here for when you switch it to left-hand configuration. So kind of cool, it's an update that they did based off of the need of an illuminator, or I'm sorry, a, an indicator light on this side, when you put it on the, the first, I'm sorry, on the left side configuration, the old ones, like the one in my left hand here, doesn't have that. So it's kind of cool they, they updated that and, and made that a thing. Now, going further down, you have your windage adjustment, so right and left, right, windage adjustment. Then going further down, you have on the six o'clock portion of the, the head is the elevation adjustment, which is your up down. Now, it's kind of weird. Malls have them underneath. It's not my favorite, but it is a position to put it. One of the things to be considerate about and when you're mounting your mall with a light on a rifle is making sure that your light is not gonna block this or block it in a place that you can unscrew like the head of the light and then get to your adjustments. So the way I mount them is usually my light is just underneath and the head of the light usually sits right here. And if it's right here, then I can unscrew the head, pull it off, grab my battery, shove them both in my pocket, make my adjustments based off of what's needed, put the battery back in, screw the, the light head back on, and then I'm good to go. So I like, I like to do it that way uh, personally because I like them both on the same side. See some of my other videos about why I do that, but either way, that's just something to be considered about as you go through that process. Now, going further over here, we have right here, and hopefully you can see it. Let me see if I can get that, yeah. So you see where my finger is blocking is a little hole, and it's it's milled into the little housing here, and that is a tie-down hole for those of you that need to tie down your stuff. Now, to the little blue screw that's on here. On the C1 Pluses, you have something that is considered an alternate mode. Right? So it says Alt here with two arrows that point at the screw hole that is for alternate mode. To set it to alternate mode, which is necessary, well not necessary, but is, is more optimized for photonist tubes, which if you have photonist tubes, that's what you may need to use, especially if you're getting blinkies, um, or your laser is strobing on you, it's probably because you need to go to alternate mode. So something to pay attention to, especially if you're using photonist tubes. Now to go into alternate mode, you just you don't just screw it into the new one. You have to shut the unit off, you have to pull the battery out, you have to unplug any switches, and then you move the screw. Make sure you keep it tight, but don't over torque it, all that jazz. And then you put the battery back in, screw it on, put your switches back on, and then you can go back to your modes. So kind of cool, just something to be aware of uh, when it comes to the alternate mode. On the DA malls, you have a training mode. So it says train here instead of alternate. 
same exact way of doing it or, or setting it up. So off, battery out, switches off, and then switch the screw. Um, the, the training mode just puts you into C1 Plus world. And if you're in C1 Plus world, it's considered eye safe by the FDA. No lasers are safe for your eyes, bro. <laughs> well, none that I know of that are going to go on a rifle. I'm sure there's lasers out there for those of you that are going to get freaking pedantic about it. But what you're, what we're talking about with these kind of lasers or lasers for pointing at people, um, usually they're not safe for eyes no matter what mode they're in. But it puts you in a training mode that you can't go to high, which hopefully alleviates you pointing it in people's eyes. Um, and I, I just don't suggest you pointing them in people's eyes anyways. But either way, unless they're bad. Um, now, that is on the, all, that is all the stuff on the head, right? So the head of the unit, all right? Now, going further back on both of these, right? Now we're getting into the body, right? And the body has the A and B button. A is always gonna be the one towards the muzzle, right? and B is gonna to be towards the shooter. Even if you configure it in a left-handed model or a left-handed way, this is still the A button, this is the B button. So either way, it's gonna be A is towards the, the muzzle, B is towards the shooter. So nothing too crazy there, but gives you some ideas. Now, the body also houses the actual mounting platform, which is pretty robust. I haven't had it come loose or anything. It's actually pretty awesome. Um, I like the mounting system for this. It's very low profile and, and slim. The only thing I would say that's a problem with it is that the screw gets really chewed up over time, which happens to anything that you're gonna mount multiple times and take on and off and all that jazz. So expect it, just so you know. Now, going further back, or actually on here, there's also this little tiny channel I don't know if you guys can see that channel that goes between the, the actual buttons and over the top here. This is a way that you can zip tie or rubber band or whatever you want to the actual the, the body to your gun. Uh, kind of cool, but it also is a way, especially during like shows and things like that, that the, uh, let's say people are putting malls on rifles for like a trade show, that it can be, um, kind of blocked where people have to actually snip them off uh, to actually get to the good old screw. The other thing is it can be used as a tie down point as well because it's it's tying the entire mall, mall, uh, mall over to the ground, or I'm sorry, to the rail. Um, it can also be a point that you go through the tie down, come around, go over the top, come underneath, tie down again, and, and all that jazz. So you could go crazy with this thing. Just other ways to tie it down if you want to call it that. Now, Lastly, we get to the tail cap. Now the tail cap is pretty dang simple. It's nothing too wild, nothing too crazy. You have your battery compartment, which has a cap that screws off. It's not like a, like a detent or one that enters a, a certain channel. Um, this one screws, uh, unscrews, it's on, on a lanyard. Uh, malls take a C1 Plus, just one of them, nipple forward. And then you have two switch ports right for your your pressure switches and then you have this little allen key spot right here that allen key spot is so that you can unscrew it you could take the tail cap off take the front off and then switch them around to set it up for a left-handed configuration or a, a opposite or right hand configuration whichever one floats your boat so depending on what you're doing that may be something that you need to do and uh and obviously um hey that's something kind of cool for lefties uh, FYI, so you can actually configure it specifically for you. Now, that is the mall. All right, those are the new malls, and this is my old mall. As you can see, the caps are different, right? It's an older mall model. This one's pretty worn out and pretty beaten up. It's got more carbon on it than anything. It's kind of disgusting. I need to clean that. Uh, but it's it's just an older mall at this point, right? It's It's been beaten up, and it also has the older switch on the front, right, or propeller. It also has the older tail cap. This is one of my first ones. Actually, this is my first mall that I ever got, and uh, and it shows. But you can see the two here. These are the two brand new ones, like I said, born in July of 2021. So they have uh, all the new programming, really cool, and uh, and hopefully uh, those those cutaways that you guys saw were useful and uh, and helped you guys you know see what you needed to see with it. So. Hope this helps, guys, and uh, if you have any questions about them, put them below. I'll answer what I can. 
And if, uh, if there's stupid comments, I'm probably not going to answer it. Cool. <laughs> Take care.